The footage you guys are about to see is actually over three months old. I started this project of putting these new windows in way back in December. In fact, I started this before I even bought my car. So you're kind of seeing things out of chronological order here. I ran out of money, didn't get to finish the project at the time, and ended up sitting on the footage for three months. Now it's March of 2020, uh, and I actually finished the windows about two or three weeks ago, but never got around to filming this. So I'm just now filming this. I've also got another video coming about a bathroom demolition that I just did, and the windows were finished before I even started doing that, so sorry about that. Well, it's been over a month now since my last video because I haven't had anything to upload. I haven't done any work on the house because I ran out of money and haven't found a job yet, although I'm fixing to be going back to driving for DoorDash and Uber so pretty much everything in here is as it was with the exception of a few things brought in I got that TV there a couch side table microwave and some cookware but I just got back from the Habitat for Humanity Restore I received another payment for the house next door and I went to Habitat for Humanity Restore in Jonesboro and got three windows. This big, tall bastard here, this is like, I think 28 inches wide or something. Oh, 25 and a half. It's 25 and a half by 77 inches tall. You know, 33 by 60 here, 32 by 52 here. These are all completely the wrong windows, so I'm going to have to do some reframing to make them work. Which, of course, as you can see, this original window here has had something like that done in its past. It's had uh, these sashes put in. They were just a little too short, so they put some filler up there. This big tall one here, I plan to put on the front here to replace this one. This one here, I plan to put to replace that one. And then this other one here, I plan on putting in here in the bedroom to replace this window that's got the box fan in it. I'm going to have to get these old window units ripped out get it down to the bare framing work there and get the necessary reframing done to fit these new windows these rough openings i can tell you from you know having done the house next door and that house is identical to this one these old shotgun houses here in town were all built the same but so i can tell you that the rough opening in these is 36 by 74 I was able to when I put new windows on that house I got all brand new vinyl uh, windows from uh, Barton's home improvement which was surplus warehouse at the time and new construction 36 by 72s fit with only just one two by four needed along either the bottom or top of the rough opening to make them fit this one here is 77 inches tall, so when I rip out the sold window unit, I'm going to have to actually uh, cut back some of the framing inside the wall and put a new header in there to make this fit. I'm going to start by ripping out the uh, casing and measuring the siding and stuff and seeing how much I'm going to have to cut to make this fit. And then, of course, this window is about 10 inches narrower than the uh, rough opening, so that's about 5 inches on each side that I've got to fill in. In the process of ripping out this front window here, I noticed something kind of interesting. 
at some point in the past, somebody has shoved fiberglass insulation in the balancer cavities. All right, starting with the front here, I got the old window ripped out now. And I've measured this opening from that bottom plate up here. And I've actually got a 75 inch opening. So I made a cut here in the siding and split it off there in the middle of that course. And I've got 77 inches to the bottom of these two uh, jack studs here. So I'm thinking I can just rip this two by four out. And these are not really carrying any weight. So I don't know, maybe just rip this out and just put the window in or cut these back and put another two by four up here. Boy, I'm making a mess. Sarah's gonna be pissed I'm destroying her house. Got that header out of there. I've cut back the paneling. And I'm gonna set this in and see how it fits. All right, that first window's just about done. Got it framed in and secured. Just gotta go get some great stuff, large gap filler here to fill in these gaps alongside it and clean up all this fucking mess I made. I also ripped down those ugly ass shutters. These blinds are going to work now. Almost. The, these kind of blinds right here really make you appreciate modern cordless blinds. These are a real pain in the ass. Got the other living room window out. You just ripped off the framing, not the framing, but the molding on the inside, and then just beat around it with a sledgehammer till it came loose, and then just shoved it out. All right, got the framing done for the next window. Just gotta get it in. Well, there's that one secured in. Didn't know how else to mount it. I guess it mounts into some type of metal enclosure or something that wasn't with it. So I just drilled a couple of holes through here and screwed it into place. Drilled three up here. That ought to be good enough. And I'll get some great stuff and foam in around it get some fiberglass to put in there, but of course I'm gonna to have to put some sheathing on the outside to cover those gaps. And then I'll have to put some kind of something in here. We got lath and plaster with two layers of paneling, so I'm gonna have to build something out here to match that thickness. So that takes care of the two. Oh, I'm gonna trip over the ladder. So that takes care of the two living room windows. Well, they're not completely done yet. I still gotta fill in around them and sheathe around the outside of them. That'll probably all be tomorrow though. Tonight I'll go ahead and run and get the great stuff and foam them in. And then tomorrow I'll sheathe around them and put the fiberglass in there. And I suppose this bedroom window is going to wait till tomorrow, too, because I'm running out of daylight here. 
And that'll be three out of six windows taken care of. Hopefully I can find the other three at Habitat for Humanity Restore. If not, then at least I'll have reduced the number of new windows I gotta buy, so saving me some money. This window here, this is aluminum, and it is double pane. That one there is wood, and it's also double pane, and it's got a vinyl track with balancer in it. And this one's double hung, so you got a top and bottom sash, both that open and close. And then, of course, I'm going to come out here and clean these. I'll take a vacuum cleaner and vacuum them down real good, get a glass scraper, get these decals off, that store sticker off, and clean them with Windex. And this, uh, Sticker here gives me some information about this window. Apparently it was made for Northeast Arkansas glass from Mark Tree. It was ordered on November 6, 2009, and apparently it was due to them by November 9, 2009. I'm guessing it's a leftover or something. And that's it for now. It is the next day, and I'm now doing that bedroom window. And I actually had to rip some paneling off the wall around it because the paneling was brought all the way to the window casing. And uh, this right here gives you a little insight as to why they put that paneling up. Apparently the plaster was in bad shape. And they put this little piece of plywood here to take up that space to make up for that thickness of that missing plaster. I've got a little lot here. So I'm gonna have to put a new member there. But hopefully this this window ought to be easy because the space it needs is about three two by fours worth of space. So I just put one along here and then two here. Well, there's the bedroom window. All done up, framed up, window secured in, spray foamed in. I did use minimally expanding window and door rated spray foam for that. And uh Joyce, the original cypress joist in this wall was bowed in quite a bit, so I had a gap there to fill in. This stuff is still a bit tacky. It's skinned over, but still pretty soft. And if you squeeze it, you'll get sticky goo on your hands. I also got the two windows in here foamed in got quite a bit of excess I'm gonna have to trim off this one here was a real bitch because of how big these gaps were because I was of course I shoved a narrower window into a bigger opening so that took like three or four cans to do multiple different applications Hadn't quite got all that void, but it is at least airtight. And I think this window may have came out of the building that got waterlogged, because uh, you look there on the blinds and on the window itself, I think that might be mold. Shouldn't be too difficult to clean off though. Oh God, these blinds are a pain in the ass. I may replace those with cordless blinds. At least I got blinds on that window so the people from the street can't just see right in. So now, all that's left to get these done is get the sheathing on the outside, get some insulation in those spots, and then of course clean up sight get rid of all these busted old window units that I just shoved outside. There's this one and the one in here 
I just kind of took ripped off the interior molding and then beat the window casing with a four pound sledgehammer till it broke loose and then just shoved it outside out of the wall and just let the window units just fall which of course that one I had to move over so I could get the ladder out there because this window right here had to be installed from the outside it's got a nailing flange around so it had to be uh, screwed in from the outside unlike this one in here which I was able to install from the inside that one there also had to be put in from the outside but uh, on that one, I'd actually pulled the window unit out a little more carefully and set it in front of the front porch. All right, now as for insulation, I'm thinking about going online and getting one of those uh, touch and seal spray foam kits that's got these two little propane tank looking things and Filling those in, of course, I got to get this outside sheathing done. But once I get it sheathed around the outside, just spray those voids in with some uh, spray foam. I'm thinking open cell for sound deadening. Because, uh, of course, I can't fill in voids though that damn big with just the cans of uh, one part. I mean, I could, but it would take a lot of cans and be a lot more difficult and take a lot more time than just getting the two-part kit. Okay, so now it's three months later. March of 2020, I finished getting the rest of the windows put in and new OSB sheathing around the windows. Okay, so this window here, this is a horizontal sliding window. This was a $15 find at Habitat for Humanity Restore. This is the same type of window that I put in the living room. This was a $40 find at Habitat for Humanity Restore. And then this one over here, this other one in the bedroom, this was a freebie. This was, uh, I found this on an old abandoned house in the outside skirts of town that was about ready to collapse. And I tracked down the owner and asked him if I could have parts off that house he told me I could because he was working on tearing that house down. So, uh, as you can see, the outside of it is covered in algae. And I've still got a little to do here. I've still got to get some, get it foamed in and caulked around and all that stuff. Well, pretty much all these windows. I still got to caulk around the sheathing and stuff, but, uh, as for these windows in here, the last time y'all saw them, they were just, uh, had open studs to the outside. I hadn't sheathed around them yet. Well, let's go walk around the outside and see how they look from the outside. Like I mentioned earlier, I just finished tearing the old bathroom off, and that'll be the next video.
Well, that's the windows done. Now I just need to see what I'm going to do about getting some new doors. Well, thanks for watching.